Hi! A digital thermometer is probably the first microcontroller project you're gonna make. You can use many different sensors with it. For example, this one uses the LM335 sensor, which is uh, quite convenient because the only thing you need to do is to hook it up to an ADC port on the AVR, because the voltages are quite compatible. But for my upcoming project I needed something that can go higher than this 335 sensor. I had to design a thermocouple thermometer. In this video I'm gonna show you the hardware and software side of designing a thermocouple thermometer with AVR microcontrollers. This is the prototype of the thermocouple thermometer. Now as you can see there is a thermocouple on the, on the left here uh, which is connected to the board and the microcontroller here uh, displays the temperature on the LCD screen. Now there is one very important element on this board left and this is the thermocouple converter itself. This tiny chip on this SO2 dip uh, breakout board is the heart of this whole prototype. It's a MAX31855 chip which is uh, converting the thermocouple voltages to digital signals. This sensor operates with a very simple serial protocol which is compatible with the SPI protocol. Now, in order to use it with the hardware SPI of the AVR, uh, we have to um, use a little trick. Uh, we need to load dummy bytes into the SPI data register. And we do it because the hardware SPI of the AVR actually activates only when uh, the data register is being written to. After it's being written, it starts to uh, pulse the clock and send the dummy data. So let's have a look at the waveforms, shall we? So on this oscilloscope screen, we can see three waveforms. Uh, the blue one, uh, the top one, is the chip select. Uh, you can see how it goes down, then uh, the yellow one starts pulsing and then suddenly uh, the data appears on the second one. Now, I have hooked up the um, channel 3, which is now turned off, to the data output. And now when I turn it on, you can see the dummy bytes that are being sent by the AVR. It's the uh, AA and 0F dummy byte. And it's always the same, because it doesn't really matter what these bytes are, because that output is actually left floating. So whatever data it is, it's not getting anywhere. So, apart from giving just the temperature data, uh, which is now done uh, in the 16 clock pulses that give us 2 bytes, we can produce 32 clock pulses by uh, feeding uh, the dummy bytes into the uh, SPI data register, into the S SPDR, 4 times. And then we can capture the full 32-bit uh, output data. Uh, when we capture the first 16 bits, we get the following data, which is the temperature sign, the temperature itself, uh, and uh, the fault detection bit. Now, if we wanted to know exactly what's wrong with the thermocouple connection, we can capture the full 32-bit output to listen to the last bits, which exactly tell us what kind of fault is it. Is it like the thermocouple is shorted to ground, or the thermocouple is shorted to VCC, or is there any thermocouple at all, because the last three bits are the error code. And apart from that we can get the cold junction compensation temperature, which is not very useful uh, in this project. Now, when it comes to reading the temperature itself, this uh, program actually reads the temperature up to hmm, one full degree. The thermocouple converter is actually uh, 0.25 degrees exact, but we don't really need that uh, much of accuracy, so we can uh, cut the uh, decimal place bits off. Now, when it comes to the thermocouple output processing, what we don't really need in this project is the temperature sign, so we can cut the first bit off, we can uh, mask the whole bit with end operation that is going to discard the first bit, and we can get rid of the 16th bit, which is the fold bit, and the 17th uh, bit, which is the reserved bit, so that gives us uh, one bit to disregard from the beginning of the number, 
and 4 bits to disregard from the end of the number. And that means we can uh, do it in two simple operations. Now this uh, leaves us with another problem, the voltage level conversion. The microcontroller runs on 5 volts and the chip runs on 3 volts. So their voltage levels are not entirely compatible. The voltage levels from the chip to the microcontroller are fully compatible, mm, but they are not the other way around. So you have to use uh, a couple of techniques uh, known as voltage level converters to get this thing up and running. So when it comes to the one-way line from the microcontroller to the chip, such as slave clock or chip select, it's very easy, you just have to use a voltage divider. And the values, in this case, for the voltage divider you can see on the screen. It's 5k and 10k, respectively. Normally I could connect the 3.3 volt output directly to the 5 volt input. But in this case, the MISO input of the AVR microcontroller was also used in programming. And the programmer was uh, 5 volts. So I needed to build a two-way level converter here. And it works like this. This uh, Zener diode clamps the uh, voltage on the whole line to its uh, uh, Zener voltage, which is typically in this case 3.3 volts. And these resistors uh, limit the current uh, to avoid uh, overloading uh, the driver buffer of the 3.3 uh, volt device or the driver buffer of the programmer. I did not really have a 3.3 volt Zener diode, so I've used uh, a normal diode, a light emitting diode which had a forward voltage of around 3 volts, and it happened to be actually the pink diode, but yeah, I didn't have anything better. 